Today we will explore the Mercer Williams House in Savannah, Georgia. The home was designed in 1860. This beautiful Italianate revival home inspired the book and film, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Unfortunately, three strange and untimely deaths have occurred in the home. Located across from one of Savannah, Georgia's most famous and pristine squares, Monterey Square in the city's historic district, the Mercer Williams House dates back to 1860. In the 1970s, famed preservationist and antiques dealer Jim Williams restored the home to its former glory after years of neglect. This Italianate revival played host to three untimely deaths, including that of 11-year-old Tommy Downs when he fell off the roof in 1969, the 1981 fatal shooting of Danny Hansford by Williams, and Williams himself, when he died in the same room as Hansford less than a year after being acquitted of Hansford's death in a fourth trial. If the story sounds familiar, it's probably because you recognize it from the best-selling book Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Much like the rest of the city, the home was supposedly built right on top of unmarked graves. Rumors about the crime and ensuing ghost stories continue to swirl to this day. Like many of the historic houses in Savannah, there have been reports of paranormal activity at the Mercer Williams house. These reports usually include commonalities like apparitions, disembodied voices, phantom footsteps and that unnerving feeling that someone is watching you. The Mercer Williams House Museum, while open to the public, is not highly excited about the home's ghostly reputation, as well their association with the novel, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. The current owner of the house, Dr. Dorothy Kingery, Williams' sister, is usually rather tight-lipped when it comes to stories about her notorious brother, and even more dismissive when it comes to paranormal activity at the house. In fact, she claims to have never had any experience of the supernatural kind. But, that does very little in actually swaying others from sharing their own ghostly experiences involving the house. The Mercer Williams' most famous resident is unquestionably Jim Williams. Some say he was a killer, others say he was at the worst very eccentric. Years after the trials, Judge George Edward Oliver, who presided over three of the trials, was quoted as saying, that son of a gun Jim Williams was absolutely guilty of cold-blooded murder. The judge went on to add, I do not blame him. That boy he shot, Danny Hansford, was trouble with a capital T. Even if you, like the judge, believe Jim Williams to be a guilty man, you must admit, he didn't really get away with anything after all was said and done. Even, as the trials ended, Williams breathed air as a free man for only six months before his death in his beloved house. Since Williams' death, those members of the staff who have worked inside of his house, in the after hours, have time and time again seen the ghost of Jim Williams. Most frequently, it is said that he appears in full apparition form, walking up and down the halls of the house. The biggest single event in Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil, and maybe in the entire history of the house was the murder of Danny Lewis Hansford. So, it would make sense that Danny's soul would have stuck around over the years. It's been alleged that Williams became so distraught by Hansford's lurking spirits, that he reached out to a voodoo practitioner to rid Hansford's soul from the house. According to some, they do not believe the voodoo practitioner's cleansing of the house worked, as in their minds, it was the ghost of Danny Hansford who killed Jim Williams. His soul was clearly unable to move on, while the man who had killed him lived on as a free man. So, he exacted his revenge, scaring Williams to death, which could be possible, especially when considering Williams' lifeless body was discovered in almost the same spot in which Danny had been shot dead, nearly a decade earlier. Another ghostly tale that is told about the Mercer Williams house is that the spirit of the young boy, Tommy Downs, who fell to his death, continues to roam the property's grounds to this very day. An especially grim version of an encounter with the ghost of the young boy is that this tortured young soul has reportedly been seen re-enacting the final moments of his life. Caught in a loop of horror, forever falling off the roof of the house and onto the iron spikes of the fence. To even imagine the sight of a small child impaled onto a fence is a ghastly nightmare waiting to be had. The sister of the young boy who died from that fall has said that the story of her brother's death is indeed true. She recalled that the medics had to cut the spike off the fence in an attempt to save her brother's life. She still remembers seeing the medics rush her brother off to the hospital, despite knowing that it was already too late. After all, how could a young child survive that fall, let alone being impaled? 
Many tourists who walk past the house over the years are so amazed by the house's timeless beauty that they inevitably take their cameras out to capture a lasting memory. And, while they don't realize it at the time, they leave with way more than they ever could have bargained for. Imagine, you're flipping through all the pictures you took while on your trip. Then, finally, you get to the photos of the Mercer Williams house, and you once again find yourself marveling at just how majestic the home really is, but as you examine the photo more closely, it happens. The ghost photo bomb. Ghost photo bombing is not commonplace, but it has been reported numerous times, amongst those who have visited the Mercer Williams. The most common of these spirits to be captured, appears to be an imagine of a small boy, with blonde hair. Those familiar with the house's history, are quick to point out the story of the boy who fell from the house. Could this photo bomber be the spirit of Tommy Downs? Another form of paranormal activity that goes on at the house is a phenomenon that you can experience without ever actually entering the Mercer Williams. Over the years, citizens of Savannah and tourists alike have witnessed ghostly images, almost a reflection, that appear in the windows of the house. These ghost-like reflections appear not only at night, but during the waking hours as well. Some have claimed that these images in the windows look to be a reflection of a boy. Could these sightings also be Tommy Downs? Is he looking for help, or just wanting to play in the afterlife? Whether it is Tommy or not, the photos of these encounters have appeared on the internet on a regular basis, and the pictures that have been circulated are convincing evidence that the Mercer Williams house is indeed haunted. Ghostly parties during Jim Williams' tenure as owner of the house, everyone in town knew that he threw the grandest parties in Savannah. Specifically, his Christmas parties became the stuff of legend, as his Christmas party was the social event of the year. Every member of Savannah's high society would clamor for invite, which always made the self-made Williams lean with pleasure. After his acquittal in 1989, Williams threw his last lavish Christmas party before his death, less than a month later on January 14, 1990. In the years following, the house sat quietly, but, five years later, reports of parties being held at the house began sprouting about. One problem, dead men usually don't throw parties, at least, one would assume that to be the case. However, this is Savannah, one of the most haunted cities in the country. So, why can't a ghost throw a party? It is alleged, that if you pass by the Mercer Williams house on the night which Jim Williams would throw his annual Christmas party, you'll see the chandelier's light illuminate the whole house, painting images of the guests in the windows as they move from room to room. Some even claim to see the women in their best societal gowns, and the men dressed to the nines as they enter the house, showing up to the festivities fashionably late. The Mercer Williams house is truly one of the great historic homes in Savannah, and also one of the great and powerfully haunted houses that can be found in the entire state of Georgia. The home is filled with forces that can overpower the strongest of minds. Here, one's emotions can quickly slip from your control, as soon as you take one step through its front door.